Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome to the last episode of Far Cry 3. Still plugging along at this mission. Wow, that was both people. Oh wait, these guys, these guys. Shit. Oh. Right. Is there like explosive proof? I'm guessing that those guys don't take a lot of damage from fire, seeing as they are wearing the flame retardant suits. Anyone else? No? Good. Sergot. Why does that guy have a mouse on his head? Normally that uh, image shows up whenever you're able to do the uh, knife takedown on someone, but I, there doesn't even appear to be anyone there right now. Alright. Okay, now I just need to not fuck this part up. Because that was my only real problem. Because enemies spawn in here as soon as I step in. Yep, there they go. Oh, come on. Yeah, the fact that there aren't enemies in there until you actually get there is kind of silly. And of course it looks like I missed them with my rocket, so... Let me mash this reload key until Jason decides to put this fucking thing in there. Shaboom! Because that wasn't two of the same enemy, that doesn't count as a multi-kill. Which is just upsetting. Finished. Not quite. Anybody else in here? Zip. Let's blow this popsicle stand. Yeah, you can get away with a lot of sprinting if you just, like, slide afterwards. It's kind of silly. Alright. Sammy. Talk to me, baby. And that's party. Oh man. Oh, I'm getting excited. I'm juiced to finish another LP. I love doing that. Is this what you need, Sam? Oh no, sorry. I've got to park it in just the right way. There we go. Hey, You know, I just did one of these, Sam, like three episodes ago, I want to say. Yeah, three episodes was with Sam. I did this like four episodes ago. Oh, man. They are tearing through me here. I might actually, well, probably not. There's only a few missions left. But I might actually need to go get more green herbs. Actually, no, I did do this three episodes ago. I did this with Sam. 
There is a man who loves his machine guns. Now, luckily, there appears to be some sort of armor plating on the front of this, which helps me take reduced damage as long as I'm looking at whoever. All right, cool. Everything is going to explode. Escape with Sam. Well, this is just, this is fantastic. going over that cliff that is how we celebrate our Independence Day Victory is ours. We did it. America, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay I don't know why don't leave me hanging. Ah, me back at but America fuck yeah really really tickled me for some reason All right. Like, just the idea of America. Fuck ya. Yeah. That's hilarious. That's really fun. All right. Um, I could go get all the relics, but, like, honestly, I don't care enough to do it right now, at least. It isn't that that worth it to me. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Had the hiccups. See, one of the things about um the upgraded guns is that they aren't necessarily better, but they often have more space for equipment and stuff you can install on it. Oh, fuck. There was some right there. Yeah, but this game is actually really generous about uh, giving you shit. Which I actually kind of dig. Um... Oh, I, I came to here, but somehow didn't see him. Are you ready to do this? Or do you need more time? Because once we start this, there's no going back. All right. So this is the thing where it's like, hey, it, are you are you really sure? Because the video, it's are you really really sure? I am. Playing this game for thirty hours. I have hidden a knife in my boot. Be ready to distract him when I say deal. Okay, got it. Ah, welcome, boys. Come in, come in. Take a seat. Five cut. Hold them all right with you. Yeah. This is a really unfriendly atmosphere for poker night. Uh, would you like some food? A nut, perhaps? No. What a job. Poker. Ask anyone on the street and they'll call it a game of chance. Or talk to Sam here and he'll say it's about bluffing. Weren't you, Sam? Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, is it? It's about keeping you playing until the house collects. But there's more where that came I from. Call. Let's see what I actually got here. Do this. I call. I'm gonna call. I'll raise. I'll call. I mean, Jack Ten's good, Jack. right? Jack. Two aces, huh? Sorry. House rules. Ah, look at that. 
We have the same cards. <laughs> so let's raise the stakes a little, shall we? Foster, Jason Brody, whatever your name is, it slipped my mind. How stupid do you think I am? We should keep playing. Dealers on the left, right? Yes, he's sitting this one out. So, got your little reunion with Riley. Not a tear to my eye. I'm rarely moved. And I'll admit, I underestimated you. Torturing your own brother. Destroying half my organization? <laughs> Bet life. Like, if he kills Jason now, he still lost Voss, and like he said, half of everything. Jason, I'm going to go easy on you, since you're a family man. One finger every time you lose. I think I'll start with the ring finger. I like that he has to saw a little bit. And now we do another big dumb QTE fight. I'm very disappointed in you, Jason. You haven't checked up on your little brother, Riley. Where is he? Don't worry. I sold him to someone very special in Yemen. He likes them young. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I have very powerful friends who will hunt you down. They won't find anything left. <laughs> Uh oh. Am I gonna have to do the whole thing over? I don't. The game just crashed. Oh my god. The fucking game just crashed. <laughs> Is that supposed to happen? What the hell? Yeah, hard crashed. Oh boy. Where is this going to put me, huh? Anyway, yeah. Um it's in my opinion it's kind of obvious that Sam is going to die because he's the only character in the game that's actually likable. Um Sam and Hoyt, I believe, are also uh, equivalents to Jason. Because, like, Jason's life is a question of has is a question of how far you're really willing to go to, you know, do shit, get shit done. Oh fuck! You can see the record date. Oh man, really? I have hidden a knife in my boot. You ready to distract? Oh my, God. you're. Kidding me. Ah, welcome, boys. Come in. 
You're fucking joking me. All right, I'll be back. Jesus. Hey, we're back. Fuck me. You'll never be married. You know you could have joined me. That was uh, that was really that was really annoying. And the thing is, because of the nature of this, you. I can't even. You, you can't even save in the middle of the mission. I don't. I don't need ten fingers to use a knife. I've been doing this long before you were born, kids. Bring it on, old man. <laughs> It's it's kind of silly. Like we always go into this big psychedelic, big silly, stupid thing to to do this. Like, oh god, why does it? Why do they do this? Why do they make this choice that all the boss fights? Why do they make the choice that all the boss fights would be very silly? See how close. What does that mean? I'll delay the flight! Alright. Now, we have reached a checkpoint. So this is the only one of them that I actually kind of like. But I also don't like it at the same time. Because somehow Jason's finger got bandaged, and everyone in here has been stabbed to death. Including Hoyt. And like, I really like how unclear it is what actually just fucking happened in there. And it apparently has something to do with Jason's big, like, warrior powers and stuff. But how that actually works is also not clear. How did this guy die? Play that music. That was a good read. On my part, I mean. Well, there go the tires of that car, so I guess I'm not taking it. Will I run the kilometer there? You might actually be able to. And I might have to. But yeah, I've mentioned that, like, every, every character in this game is essentially a foil. Can be treated as a foil to Jason. Heal. There you go. Oh, I'm dry. But yeah, um... And I think Hoyt is, like Voss, another... way of seeing Jason taken to an extreme, you know, an extreme of violence. But at the same time, Voss is concerned with stuff on the island itself. Fucking really? Um, like, Hoyt doesn't give a shit about the mythology of this island. He doesn't care about the Tatao. To to what do you mean I'm leaving the mission zone? I'm going towards this thing. She was extremely easy to hear. So I think it's kind of weird that Sam um, is able to hide himself for that long over that extended period of time. Uh, but whenever Jason shows up and Sam starts trying to help him, uh, Sam is immediately found out and Hoyt uh, doesn't do anything about it. Shit. I don't need this 
right now. I don't, man. A helicopter? That's just silly. So the helicopter actually comes from uh, Helios. No, Hello. And Corruptra. Which means a spiral wing, I believe. He killed Hoyt, freeing us from our slave labor. Like, granted, some of these people do enjoy their, you know, job being a supervillain's, like, henchman. But also... Hey, survived Jason Brody is now, like, a, a thing you could put on a resume. Oh, man. Here we go. If I have to listen to that fucking cutscene again. Okay, I do not. Get him! <laughs> really? This is this is what we're doing? This is the big finish? No, I know for a fact that there's more. You don't need to worry about that. Riley must be in one of these buildings. The one important prisoner that we have, of course. Like, you'd think he'd be in here based on how many fucking people there are in here. Anyway, yeah, I've been getting distracted, but on my topic, well, you can see Voss as Jason to the extreme where he is, you know, evil and also concerned with the island. You can see Hoyt as the extreme where Jason is not concerned with the island, but still evil. So, like, he doesn't care about anything besides just violence, money, debauchery, and hedonism. Um, hmm, that isn't good. Okay, I'm just going to loot these things just to get them off my map, but also they will give me goodies. Oh boy, I totally had him. Alright, so maybe if we go this way. Dude, the reload. This isn't this is going poorly. Um But yeah. On that same topic, you can also choose to see Sam as another aspect of Jason. Except uh an aspect where he is more prepared for violence, but also has remained truer to himself. And it just ended up in a very good place, you know? Sam has a lot of uh, homeostasis going on in his character arc. 
Because he's been in deep cover for many years by the time Jason actually meets him. And like, deep cover. Who is shooting me? Somebody over here. I'm not sure if it was an assassination exactly. I mean, it was supposed to be. So yeah, um, I think Hoyt is... Uh, kind of being just a little bit of a Mary Sue when uh, he somehow manages to figure out the whole thing. Um, I don't think it's very well foreshadowed since you wouldn't ever suspect... Oh, he is in here. You would never ever suspect that Hoyt would be in any way like... Or not even... It has nothing to do with Hoyt. You wouldn't suspect that Sam is fallible like he ends up being in the cutscene. That'll get you out, Riley. Riley, must be in one of these buildings. Riley has been yelling at you. I'm in here. Please save me, Jason. Cool boy. All right. We're getting closer, though. We found Riley. I love how it's like, you can fucking open up some safe houses by liberating outposts. And like... I haven't needed to do that for several hours. Maybe like six or seven hours I haven't needed to out like outpost liberate. There are no more outposts to liberate. I'm trying to weave through these trees in the hope that their barky goodness will soak up some of the damage I'm taking. That was that was dumb. I should just shoot guys. You don't see me. What time is now? Hey, I'm in here. All right. Must be in one of these buildings. He is in one of these buildings, in fact. Oh my gosh! So that's just lighting my uh, my bow on fire, right? Like that isn't hurting me. Oh no, it's definitely hurting me. I can't see shit here. Wow. Okay, yeah, um, I'm starting to regret the fact that I do not have any assault weaponry. Like, I'm wishing for, like, an LMG or something. Oh, man. Riley, no! He's just running into danger. So now we have taken the form also, this is very important. We have taken the form of the cool badass super soldier big brother who is saving the younger brother. Which is exactly how we started this game. When we, Jason, the wimpy little brother, had to be saved by Grant. That's what happened. I like, I like that they do talk about the pilot license, but it has nothing to do with the fact that he knows how to fly helicopters, but he's like, well, you better get this fucking thing in the air.
And now that Hoyt's dead, use of Riot of the Valkyries has passed from Hoyt to Jason. Ah, uh, if only Sam were here. He would say something a little worrying, like, Ah, now this is music to invade Poland, the tool. Is now the time for a Star Wars reference? Like, I talked earlier about how, like, on the one hand, um, like, Jason spouting witty one-liners in the, in the rescue missions is kind of strange. But, like, that one's also really weird because it's also a pop culture reference that doesn't really fit here. I mean, I guess Luke Skywalker flew a, flew like a space plane, but this isn't a helicopter. It's not like that guy's name is Luke or anything, it's Riley. Riley Skywalker. Riley's a good little kid's name. I think that's Tony Hawk's, uh, the name of Tony Hawk's son. Nice. Love that. What are those things? Silt Striders? Oh, they're little pods. Oh, no, those, those are men. So yeah, those are guys all laying face down because there's no giving in this game. Are you kidding me? Riley, you're taking us in a circle. Like I know video games love to have your big helicopter rail shooter seg like sequence. Although I guess it is a little justifiable and excusable in that like Riley is explicitly very inept with a helicopter. He's not just taking passes around, he's just trying to get this thing out of the fucking way. Also, I like how this helicopter, which came equipped with the boombox, can survive as many rocket hits as it needs to. And yet, uh, every other helicopter that I, Jason Brody, have shot have fallen down in in one big go, you know? One rocket and that's it. Though, that would actually make... Is this Hoyt's helicopter? Because then that would be why it has armor plating and why it uh, is equipped to play Ride of the Valkyries. So do we. <laughs> um, there's one, uh, there's this one piece of, uh, dialogue about Spider-Man that I really like. It actually originates from Marvel Zombies, of all places. But it's, uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, um, is discussing how he just, like, shit-talks his villains because if he's shit-talking, then he is too focused on being funny to pay attention to how fucked he is. And because he's not freaking out, he's he's fine, you know? And I feel like Jason kinda kinda fell into that, you know? He realized that he had become an action movie protagonist, but also realized how horrible that is, and so he had to cope by making witty one-liners. So how could Hoyt have possibly done this? Also, I seem to have lost my clothes. Um, also, on the topic, I really like how, um... Um, I really like how... Jeez, I'm down to 40 leaves. Yep, it's pretty bad in here. I like how, um... 
so in the cutscene where you kill Hoyt, um, you have the the same big dumb knife fight that you have with the other two bosses. And I feel like that part is silly. I think it's stupid to do that. I think it, you know, is a waste of a good boss. Because it's not a real boss fight. It's just a quick time event, and that's lame. But I like that um, they start to become more and more magical as the game goes on. And hey, it's Dr. What's-His-Name. I'm not being irreverent here. I've actually forgotten his name. Jungle warriors. I'm sorry. They carried your friends. To the temple. Gasp. So yeah, the uh I don't So yeah, how could Hoyt have done this? Well, he didn't. The Rakyat did. Yeah, it turns out that the uh, obviously evil Citra Yeah, she betrayed us cuz it is by law required that you must have a betrayal in every Xbox 360 era video game. All right, hard choices. Is this the last one? Oh, whoops. Yep, that's the last mission. All right. Where the hell is it? So if this, so if the game had a third half here, what have you done with my actually, let's just. I'm glad you returned victorious. Where are you taking him? I'm helping him. So in addition to uh, Citra raping us and uh, having a whole bunch of hoops for us to jump through and a bunch of bullshit, she has now taken away our agency in the hopes that uh, we can, nope, in the hopes that she can make me better in the eyes of her religion. Okay, so what's the catch? See, I know I've become this, like, deistic warrior demigod, but, like, yeah, this is Citra, like, just taking it out of Jason's hands, drugging him against his will. Um, and also, she's definitely kidnapped all of his friends. Yeah, this is where I feel like this game gets kind of weird, because you meet Voss. Then you meet Citra, and then you meet Buck, and then you go back to Citra, and then back to Voss, and then you go to Hoyt, and then it's Hoyt, Hoyt, Hoyt for half the game. Only the strong survive. And then it's Citra, and Citra's a villain now. And so this game, like, moves between... No, we had a cool QTE knife fight. Shut up. Powerful 
But yeah, all the villains in this game are this. No, my tats. Ooh. This is a little silly, also. She's got the big, dumb ink monster face. All your progress, your tata, everything you have done on this island will be erased. You are ready, warrior. Here is your blade. So, uh, hard choices. That's a uh, yeah. That's the name of this mission, and boy, is it. Um, actually, in the past, I think this game has made choices for me. I think so. So I'll just. Why must you leave? You will stop being a warrior, a hero. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's why I did this whole thing. Thing is, Jason said, I want to kill these two people, and he killed a lot of people in between them. But he did kill them. And he's like, okay, I'm done. And you know what? I respect that hustle. So Dennis comes up here and starts white knighting because he thinks I've offended their religion and stuff because of this tattoo that I didn't ask for and this destiny I didn't want. And he stabs me and Citra somehow takes it. I love you. I've known you for like three days. Don't You're dying, man. That's... It's out of my hands now, no matter what. But if the game had another third after this, where the Rakyat were now the villains, well, then it would be a lot like Hayes, and it'd be kind of weird. Or like Dennis splintered the Rakyat and turned it into a civil war. That'd be kind of interesting. Oh no, your actions had immediate consequences. So in the bad ending, uh, Jason kills all of his friends and joins Citra and they have sex. And uh, then Citra kills Jason, uh, meaning that she was lying about all that shit. And uh, says that his baby will become the super badass super king of the Rakyat. And maybe take over the world or something. Um, in terms of that twist, let me say, first of all, uh, Dragon Age did it better. Dragon Age Origins, specifically. Uh, it was foreshadowed better. And, like, I think it's so weird for Citra to have to, to betray you. I can't come back from this. I'm a monster. I can feel the anger inside me. Somewhere inside me, more than that. Better than that. All right. Yin's young Mark. Hell yeah, man. So yeah, um, pretty de pretty decent shooter, if I must say. Um, the story has some problems. 
I think the roulette it tries to play with its villains is almost Spider-Man 3 levels of, like, it doesn't know what it wants to do with them. And on that, I think it could have done better. Um, I always felt that each villain doesn't so much just have an ending rather than they just stop. Uh, and so much of this game is out of Jason's hands, but that was also the idea of it. Because a lot of Voss's stuff was out of his hands. It was stuff that Citra led him to do, and we can see now Citra's straight up evil. And so, was Voss being evil all Hoyt, or was Citra to blame for some of it? And I think that definitely he was, you know, partially responsible, but considering Citra, uh, they're probably a lot more evil. And then go back uh, several episodes ago and think about, like, Voss saying that eventually fam is going to make you choose them or me, me or them, and, like, was Voss on the, the Rakyat path? Like, was he on this warrior path? Was he working on that? Did he have to kill all of his family to, to further it? Did he stop at Citra? Like, where is this? Um, yeah, because so much of this game is very mundane stuff, like killing Hoyt. Like, the everything on the second island with Hoyt is all essentially just... Like, it's all basically, um... Oh, God. it's That's essentially the plots of the first two Far Cries. Where it's like, there's a warlord, and you gotta go kill him. I think one of them is also, e as well, um, South African. And they have a similar accent, even. Uh, I think so, at least. Um, and Far Cry 4, after this, continues it, where they have another charismatic, crazy, wacky, woohoo, you know, supervillain, uh, Pagan Min, who is... Uh, a lot of people describe him as a poor man's Voss, but I think he balances Voss and Hoyt into one character well. And Far Cry 4 is also a little cleaner than this game. It's also very similar to this game. Um, so a lot of people, you know, would play one and be like, well, I don't really have the interest in playing the other one. You know, I played four. I don't really feel like playing three or vice versa. Because, like, they're just so similar, you know? And some people like that as well, which is one of the things about Far Cry Primal. Because some people think that it's too different to be Far Cry. Because the Far Cries are all pretty similar. Uh, but some people think that it is uh, way too similar to the other Far Cries and not different enough. Which is wild that you have people on both sides of the fence there. That like it's not different and it is too different. <sighs> but yeah, um, overall, I think the mythology in this game is good but could have used another pass. I feel like this is a thing where Ubisoft made the game and then said, okay, now write a story. You know, um, it's one of the things, uh, let me, let me, let me give an example here. They made the island, right? And, you know, the A team coded and made this whole gigantic, beautiful, you know, little island. I guess it's technically an archipelago, but, you know, they made these islands. And then I feel like afterwards, a different team came through and put all the little collectibles everywhere. And they're like, okay, well, this is a lame place to put a collectible, but... They want to have 120. And, like, I feel like this this game's development was come at sort of scattershot, you know? Man, could you imagine that... Wait, all the additional programming guys are named either Oliskander or Christian. What the hell? <laughs> Tobias Neiman is the cinematics director. Not bad. Oscar Lukvist. Lundfisk. That's pretty good. Concept artists, those guys did a good job. Interface designers needed work. The sound design in this game is top notch. I want to shout out all those people. I wonder if someone's ever been hired through the credits of another video game. But yeah, I think this game's main problem is its shuffle because so much, so many people liked Voss, even though he's just Heath Ledger Joker. Or, I mean, in some cases, people liked that he's just that he's like that because Michael Mando does a good job on it and like it's not a people like that character Frederick Villain was the technical pro programming director um and then it switches to Citra being like mean but not evil and then Buck and then Hoyt or sorry and then back to Voss and then Hoyt and then back to Citra and she's now evil and like just the roulette that it does with its 
It's just so weird. It's a weird design choice. And ultimately, it isn't bad either. It's a good video game, to say the least. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go back and get all of those fucking collectibles now that I think of it. Because, like, I've gotten half of them. I'm pretty sure that the second half of them is going to be remarkably similar to the first half. And there's already so many collectibles in here, and a lot of them just whatever, man, you know? But hey, it's saved in this uh, in the Ubisoft thing, which, you know, doesn't work right, but, you know, it exists in the Ubisoft cloud. And for those of you who have forgotten since the very first episode, I had some technical difficulties with this. Like, I bought it off Steam, I had to download it, and it didn't work, and I had to re-download it, and then it asked if I wanted to download Uplay, and then I had to download it through Uplay and use that launcher to play it, and then afterwards I was completely able to use Steam to launch it. But sometimes it would open Uplay to play Far Cry 3. Just, I don't like Uplay. I don't enjoy it. I think it's silly. A lot of people named Ionut. Like Donut, but with I instead of a D. <coughs> but yeah, that's Far Cry 3. I really didn't expect this game to go so short. I thought it would have gone longer, but like, yeah, this game actually isn't as short as people think. Um, HLTV really uh, lowballed me here. But yeah, as it goes up now, it should be the Monday the 18th of January. And I should be uh, in the midst of... Like, I should have just started my Far Cry New Vegas playthrough. And, like, I talked about the Far Cry New Vegas playthrough. I might have to... That that might have to show up later. Like... Or, sorry. I, I, uh, I might end up being later in Far Cry than I expected I would be when I actually looked at Far Cry 3. Like, when I brought it up. I might not have even started it. But yeah, um, I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm not, I didn't really like sit down and organize my thoughts. I just have a lot of musings and a lot of ideas on the, on the thought process in this game. But I, uh, I do think that, I think that this game has a lot going on. I like that this game attempts to have a mythology. I like that it, you know, wants to have, uh, something more than just being another shooter on an island. And it's why this ended up shaking up a lot for Far Cry in general and for Ubisoft. Because there's a lot of the games, other games, that started to take from this. Like, for a sake, Breath of the Wild has a lot in common with Far Cry. Um, I bet you money dollars that the next Elder Scrolls is going to uh, have a little of Far Cry in there. A lot of mocaps, huh? I wonder why. Game on audio, Montreal, Fred Malone, sound engineer. All right, we're getting down to the additional thanks and localizations. This shouldn't be too long. We're through it a little bit. Two guys named Xavier on the uh, translations. Voice talents. Yeah, this is a very, very... Michael Mando, there he is. Yeah, this is a very good experience. Um, I hope everyone enjoys the playthrough. Uh, I hope that... Everyone's excited to see the next one because I am going to play at least one more Far Cry on this channel, possibly more. Um, I'm thinking about playing some with my wife as well. Because she doesn't know anything about Far Cry. Um, she might like five because it's set in America. She might like four because you can ride on the back of a war elephant. 
Uh, she might like um, Blood Dragon because it's... Uh, well, if you know anything about Blood Dragon, you'll know why people who don't necessarily like the other Far Cries will enjoy Blood Dragon. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, Whew, that's Far Cry, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be playing Far Cry Primal, Primal, rather, in February, the 23rd, I believe, is when that starts, uh, because that game will be five years old then, and will have reached another five, and will have reached five years, exactly, of me wishing that Ubisoft did a little more with that. I'm going to talk about this in the LP in general, but, like, Ubisoft pushed Far Cry Primal so hard, like, um... Fuck it. They, they commissioned JonTron to make a video about it. Like, JonTron doesn't even talk about video games anymore. I think he did at the time. But, like, first of all, controversial pick. Second of all, um, JonTron doesn't talk, like, didn't talk about modern video games. So, you know, kind of weird. And, like, yeah, they just had JonTron make a fucking video about Far Cry Primal. They had, uh, they had Slow Mo Guys make a video about Primal. Um,. They're not a gaming channel. Like, Gavin works for Rooster Teeth, but, like, he's on a gaming channel, but that channel has nothing to do with gaming. They just had a thing where they uh, got a model of an elephant's foot and had it step on something in slow motion. It's kind of silly. And, like, it was kind of amazing how, like, that went nowhere. I'm probably getting content ID'd all to shit for the uh, end credits of this. Two Pavels, George Vladimir, Metliev, and Dmitri. Uh, what country was this again? Was this uh, was this Russia? I'm starting to think so. Two Sergeys. Vitali. Danish version. Okay, now we're now we're getting to the things where there aren't voice casts for the uh, other versions. This is just, uh, this is just, they translated it and that's it, right? Yeah, because now we're in Czech. So that means you can play this game in Russian. Interesting. I've always wanted to play, um, a game in a language that I don't speak. I actually attempted to play, uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance in French because I figured that that would be a little more historically accurate. But, uh, I, uh, I hated Kingdom Come Deliverance for a lot of reasons. Um, on this topic, Far Cry Primal has a conlang uh, instead of English, where everyone speaks that conlang instead of uh, constructed language, um, instead of speaking English, which I think is fantastic. There should be more games that do that, because those games are really easy to translate. Because if they're a Japanese studio, but they come out in a conlang, then it's not Japanese to begin with, so there's nothing to translate. So you just subtitle it, and you're good. And it was already subtitled in Japanese, so... Yeah, you're good. Uh, it's why Shadow of the Colossus has such widespread appeal. Um, I've always wanted to have a game where the only voice acting is in uh, a conlang. I talk about a lot of things on this channel, and, like, game design is... Uh, observing game design is a passion of mine. I really like thinking about it and looking at it. Uh, I do intend to develop games at some point, but, like, fuck, man. My life is hectic. Uh, I think we're still in quarantine. Coming up on a year now of, uh, quarantine. Uh, as I record this, you saw on the upload date. Or, you saw on the, the date on the fucking save file. Uh, COVID is now officially one year old. For me, so... I don't know if we're going to be out of quarantine by that time, but, like, man, life is all over the place for me. And yet, I'm always at home. Still all over the place. It's currently Thanksgiving. Coming up on Thanksgiving, at least. So I'm going to see my family. That's good. <sighs> Man, there's a lot of credits. Like, I, I'll admit, I, I intend to talk through the credits of any game that I play. And, like, for something like Doom, that's really easy because the development team is, like, 19 people. <sighs> oh, Man. Ubisoft games have such a big fucking staff. Like, I really started to notice it when Assassin's Creed Revelation comes out, and it's like Ubisoft. Like, the, the opening credits are like a couple of minutes long, because it's like Ubisoft. Ubisoft Montreal. Ubisoft Los Angeles. Ubisoft Shanghai. Ubisoft France. Ubis and, and there's like 16 or 17 different studios 
and they're all just Ubisoft name of country or city. All right, we're getting down to the legal notices. Oh, and what's more, this game also has um, a co-op campaign constructed like Left 4 Dead or something. Uh, it's just, I think the maps are just recycled from the islands themselves and they stick you into something like, uh, they stick you into a place that's very linear so they can guide you through it. Um, so there's no like exploration and it's just you and up to three friends for a total of four people all doing shit on the island. Um, I think that's kind of a weird inclusion. This is a, this is the uh, era where games had to have some sort of online play. Um, and like sometimes that was stupid like Spec Ops The Line and Uncharted did not need a deathmatch mode you know and sometimes this was weird annoying and shoehorned in but it still made sense like um it was and it was kind of cool like uh, Dead Space 2 was forced to have multiplayer because EA is a shit but uh Dead Space 2's multiplayer was half the team played as dude who played like Isaac Clarke and the other half played as Necromorphs and that's a really cool idea and so to give this like an almost Left 4 Dead style like campaign system where you play as uh, a couple of chapters as your as your unit of four people is weird. I don't think it fits for the game because a lot of the a lot of the theming of this game is about like what will you do? What is, you know, and it's very isolated. Like Jason barely talks to two people at a time. Like and if he does it's because they're part of an organization like he talks to, you know, all of his friends from back home, and all of those people are, you know, simultaneously representative of the past. Or he talks to Dennis and Citra at the same time, uh, and also unnamed other Rakyat warrior. And that guy is, uh... Uh, sorry. And that guy is, like... Th those three are all representative of the island's myths, you know? So yeah, it's a. Uh, there's a lot of decisions in this game that are weird, and uh, some of them that I think are bad. But at the same time, I honestly cannot think of another way. Like I talked very briefly about how like, if you were to do like a um, a revisionist view of this, you could have it be like Hoyt is only the two thirds mark, and there's another third half of the game. Um, but then you would need to rewrite it more so that Voss, Buck, Hoyt, and Citra, or Citra stays good and Dennis becomes the villain. Uh, but those four all get equal screen time. Like, how would that even work? It would make sense if, like, Buck was, like, your little taste of the second island and then you got pulled back to deal with Hoyt because he moved to Voss's island. And then Dennis is on the, the second island again. Like, balancing the two islands... Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, yeah, like honestly, the the main issue that I have with this game, I've said it, I've said it a hundred times by now, but like, just it's so unfocused with its villainy. It's so all over the place, and I feel like they almost don't know what they're doing. And to me, that's that's to the detriment of my enjoyment. Like, I think that I might like this game better if, um, like, Voss was more structured of a villain all the way through, you know? Uh, I think it's really lame that all the, like, you have fights and stuff, but all the really big bosses are taken out by QTEs every time. Like, Voss has a big time QTE. And, and three of those, all of the four, like, villain... I guess three of them are all done in the psychedelic like super fucked up dream world and like it's really lame for Voss because the the whole TV aesthetic doesn't start until that episode uh, until that mission and there's a little bit a little earlier but besides that that's about it um for Buck it's so jarring because like for Hoyt Hoyt's death is the culmination of Jason's path as a warrior because that's the only thing he really wanted to do and with Voss Voss is an important step on that path, capital P path. 
Um, and what's more, Voss is also in on the mythology of the island. Um, not to the extent of, Jace, of Jason or Citra, but he does know about it. Um, wow. These are really long credits. Anyway, um, but yeah, that's kind of a whole, that's a weird choice for Voss, I think. The one with Hoyt is my favorite one, but it's also the worst one. Um, because, like, Hoyt, you would think you would have some fucking closure against. You would have, like, an honest, like, fight with him, but it's just the same, like, dumb, slappy QTE that you had against the other fools. Um... The one cool thing about it has nothing to do with a fight, but it's when you wake up from the hallucination where you kill Hoyt. Hoyt is still dead in the real world, and you get to see and, you know, savor that corpse, you know, savor that, like, hey, I did it. But at the same time, you also have, uh, you also have, like, 30 other people dead throughout the building, and, like, the whole building's cleared out. There's blood everywhere, there's, like, gunshots, and, like, it's it's just this it's this awesome it's almost like a locked door mystery like what happened like when Jason goes in that warrior state what exactly happened like did he bandage his arm did the 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 other guys patch up his finger like were there more th things that we didn't see what didn't we see you know it's so interesting um the mythology of this game started in Far Cry One um. In Far Cry 1, you can use, like, animalistic instincts uh, to, like, track prey and mark stuff and shit. Uh, and developing those instincts into being a warrior is what this game starts to play with. Uh, all this mythology and the idea of shit that might be magic or might be real, and then some stuff that is unexplainable without magic. David Bruce and David Bull right next to each other. Uh, some stuff that's unexplainable about magic, like how Jason somehow managed to know who Buck was and find him without ever seeing him before through just some kind of magic, I guess. That's all, uh, that's very interesting, and that all starts to come back more in Far Cry 4. The path, to a certain extent, comes back in Far Cry 4. Um, they keep saying the path in Far Cry 4, but what they're primarily talking about is the Golden Path, which is, I believe, an organization. Um, all right. Additional thanks. Who boy. But yeah, as I mentioned, there's a lot of, uh, all right, licensed music. Didier Lord. I think you freaky. I don't know if I ever heard that. Paper planes. Hell yeah. I remember dying ant word. That's the song that plays in the, um, uh, the, the weed burning one. I don't know what all of these are. Rod of the Valkyries, naturally. Rod of the Valkyries is still... Oh, it's public domain. Okay. Serpent Dance. I think a lot of the... Oh, Trouble in Zion. <laughs> um, I think a lot of these are actually songs you hear on the like radio in the cars. Change the world. Booming. Beanie Bimmer. All right. Flash, huh? Good old Bink video. Okay, come on. We're almost through this, right? Oh, hell yeah. I love Havoc. Havoc is a good physics engine. I would honestly be... I've talked about this in the past, but I would love to develop a game in an outdated engine that still works. Like, I would love to build something. It's it's why I like the idea of a half, of a Cry of Fear, because playing something in a 15 year old engine is actually like not entirely to that game's detriment. I would love to make a game with Havoc. Hey, we're back. All right. Well, we're here. And yeah, I've got uh, the rest of the island to explore. I'm uh, I'm not gonna. I'm leaving these 70 odd relics and these six letters, but everything else is maxed out. 
Whew. And finally, that is Far Cry 3, everyone. I've been Alfred. Thanks for coming to say hey. I'll see you guys next time.